There was a period of complete darkness, with no stars or galaxies illuminating what we know today as our universe. But did this dark phase of the universe really exist? James Webb will now unravel the mystery of the Dark Ages. For the first time, we can see with our own eyes an era in which there should have been no light. Thanks to computer technology, scientists have reconstructed the processes in the young and hot universe almost down to the smallest detail, and everything seemed coherent for a long time. But now, everything is different. James Webb shows us things in the dark era that shouldn't actually exist. Let's take a closer look at a mystery of the universe that was previously little known. In the calculations of astronomers, the Dark Ages existed as a phase that extended from the first moments after the Big Bang to the emergence of the first sources of light. For a long time, astronomers could only speculate about what happened during this era. At the end of the Dark Epoch, the first stars and galaxies allegedly began to form slowly. The stars of the so-called Population 3 were gigantic, brightly shining blue supergiants which, after a few hundred thousand years of life, rose up in huge explosions and made a new generation of stars and elements possible with their power. So far, so good. With the launch of the James Webb Space Telescope in the summer of 2022, the veil of this dark age slowly began to lift, and what we got to see was incredible at first. James Webb shows us brightly lit galaxies in the era that was supposed to be dark. On the Trail of the Dark Ages Let's embark on a fictional journey into the dark era of the universe, which began about 380,000 years after the Big Bang and lasted until the first stars and galaxies were formed. Until now, researchers were certain that this took place about a billion years after the Big Bang. These results come from observations of the cosmic microwave background radiation, which can be seen as an echo of the Big Bang. The epoch is called dark because there were no light sources, the first stars had not yet formed, and the universe was filled with a dense fog of hydrogen gas that did not allow light to pass through. If we could see this epoch, we would perceive a space that is completely dark and in which hydrogen and helium gas expands like in an ocean. The billowing gases already show subtle variations in temperature and density, which later develop into the forces that form stars and galaxies. The temperature of the universe slowly cools, creating the conditions for the formation of the first complex structures. During this time, particles such as neutrinos and dark matter whizzed through space, with the latter believed to have played a decisive role in the formation of the first cosmic structures. Gas gathered around so-called gravitational nuclei, which began to vibrate and eventually gave rise to the first stars. Researchers call these first stars Population 3 stars. Thanks to the intense radiation from these blue supergiants, the surrounding dense nebula of hydrogen gas was slowly ionized and the universe became more permeable to light. This process, known as reionization, ushered in fundamental changes and officially ended the Dark Ages. Here, we would be at about one billion years after the Big Bang, but James Webb proves that there were already finished galaxies only 300 million years after the Big Bang. Universe Breakers – Earliest Galaxies It may sound strange, but a handful of galaxies are now overturning everything we thought we knew about the early universe. James Webb's most spectacular discovery was given the telling nickname Universe Breakers. The ancient galaxies are not breakers of the real universe, they simply sweep all previously valid theories of the origin of space off the table and break old traditions. So the oldest of these galaxies were shining in the middle of what we know as the Dark Ages, and it should be clear that scientists now need to come up with new answers. In addition, the telescope has detected early black holes, including one that, according to all known rules of physics, should be older than the universe itself. Just 500 million years after the Big Bang, the monster was already so huge that it could have held one billion suns. But how can that be? As far as we know, black holes grow by annihilating matter or merging with other black holes. How could this black hole have already swallowed up a billion solar masses just 500 million years after the Big Bang if no stars supposedly existed at the time? The black hole is not alone in the universe, but the center of a massive and highly developed galaxy, and here we have the next universe breaker. Black holes as the centers of galaxies were previously regarded as indicators of old and highly developed galaxies. However, it should not occur in the young universe. Here, too, 
James Webb shows us that at least the temporal processes in the universe were completely different than previously assumed. James Webb cleans up. This telescope really cleans up. An interesting and also fun fact is that the dark epoch of the universe was previously thought to be unobservable simply because there was no light. But now we can see this time with our own eyes and we are amazed that the dark ages were bright and full of galaxies. The James Webb Space Telescope was launched by an international initiative between NASA, the ESA, and the CSA to take us as close as possible to the birth of the first stars. For all the scientists hoping to finally see the oversized baby stars of Population 3, James Webb's galaxies came as a shock. Since the discoveries, scientists have been faced with astrometric shambles and the beginning of a new astronomy. Ultimately, however, James Webb's aim was to show us how the first stars and galaxies were formed, and now we know that we have to look even further back in time to finally answer this question. And we know that the old idea of the Big Bang 13.8 billion years ago and the Dark Ages is very probably wrong. Can the Big Bang be saved after all? Scientists did not make up the idea of the Big Bang and the Dark Ages out of thin air. All theories are based on real observations and have been tested several times. For a long time, the cosmic background radiation, which shows the structures of the early universe like a carpet, was regarded as proof, and there were indications that everything began at one point, the Big Bang. Only later did the basic observations become a construct that was based more on assumptions and tricky variables such as dark matter. We have still not been able to prove its true existence, and that is possibly the source of the error. The theory of the Big Bang is on shaky ground, but researchers are not yet ready to give it up completely. A new theory has corrected the age of the universe to 16.7 billion years, but so far, we don't know if this is true. Most experts in the cosmology of the young universe currently agree that, despite the new findings, the Big Bang and expansion are fundamentally consistent theories. Another possibility to just about save the old theories would be that stars and galaxies formed much faster than previously assumed. Although this would be a physical miracle, it cannot be ruled out. Nor can we rule out the possibility that the Big Bang occurred 40 to 100 billion years ago. There are also indications that our previous interpretation of the redshift was wrong. With the help of the redshift of old and well-traveled light waves, researchers measured distances and directions of movement in the universe. Even the smallest errors can assume enormous proportions here. It's also possible that there was a dark age, which also lies further back than previously assumed. Either researchers will now find coherent new explanations and clearly identify the errors, or we will have to wait until we have telescopes that can see even further back in time. How far can James Webb see? Let's note that scientists previously thought that we could only see as far back as 500 million years after the Big Bang, because there was supposedly no light before then. This corresponds to a view 13.5 billion years back in time. Hubble could also theoretically see this far back, but the old space telescope only provided very blurry images from this epoch. Webb's official range is also 13.5 billion years, but it was clear that this new telescope would deliver sharper images. Webb's technology is also able to break down the finest light signals into their individual parts so that we can analyze blurred light spots more precisely than with Hubble, even at these enormous distances. In this deep image, scientists have located galaxies that are 13.6 billion years old and possibly even older. This shows us that Webb's actual reach now goes much further. With a little fine-tuning, we may be able to see galaxies that are 13.8 billion years old or even older then we would know for sure that the Big Bang did not happen back then. What new theories do we have? We already have some exciting new ideas about what the young universe might really have looked like. Theories that the formation of stars and galaxies may have started much earlier than previously thought suggest that there was a more rapid condensation of matter in the young universe. In simple terms, this corresponds to a kind of fast start in which gas and dust coalesced more quickly to form the first stars and galaxies. Perhaps there was some kind of hidden ingredient or previously overlooked force that acted as a catalyst for star formation, accelerating the pace even further. Other models emphasize the role of dark matter and the possibility that variations in the density of the early universe led to faster collapse processes than predicted by the standard models. 
A predecessor universe may also play a role in the unusual discoveries. The British physicist Sir Roger Penrose postulated the idea of a cyclical universe back in 2005, according to which a new universe emerges after the end of an old one. This could also explain why black holes possibly existed before the first stars. Particle physics and theories of quantum gravity could also provide much-needed answers. Imagine a world in which exotic particles served as catalysts for the rapid formation of structures and matter in the young cosmos. Or the quantum foam caused matter to grow like mushrooms from the ground of the young universe through previously unknown principles of quantum mechanics. What is NASA hiding from us? Today we reveal the biggest NASA mysteries and shed light on the question of why NASA is always very dismissive when it comes to theories about aliens and extraterrestrial life in our own solar system. Again and again, wild rumors are swirling around NASA projects whose findings are not shared with the public in a completely transparent manner. This naturally fuels speculation even further. Just as the USA is the world leader in global politics, business, and surveillance, NASA is the undisputed number one when it comes to space exploration and space travel. Because NASA had a monopoly for a long time, large-scale secrecy and cover-ups are said to have taken place within the organization. Some even go so far as to claim that NASA has adopted a tough strategy of silence and denials in order to conceal outrageous discoveries. What is really going on on Mars? Would you believe me if I told you that there is life on Mars and that NASA knows about it? Rumors of extraterrestrial life have been swirling around the red planet for more than 100 years. In the meantime, we have sent dozens of probes and several rovers to Mars for lander exploration and there was supposedly no sign of life there. Nevertheless, the rumors persist that there must have been life on Mars at least once. The internet is full of pictures showing the supposed remains of buildings, Stonehenge-like structures, or pyramids. As a rule, NASA officials deny such sightings or do not comment on them at all. Officially, NASA is also searching for traces of life on Mars. To this end, several rovers have already landed in areas that look as if they once held water. NASA rovers have now reached the stage where they can drill into the ground and examine rock samples on site. However, not a single bacterium or microbe has been found so far. NASA is now saying that Mars is now biologically dead. However, the methane emissions from our neighboring planet provide evidence of a different picture. On Earth, methane is often an indicator of biological activity. It is produced by a variety of microbial life forms, from cattle to bacteria in wetlands. Methane has been detected on Mars by instruments such as the tunable laser spectrometer on board the Curiosity rover. The seasonal variations in emissions suggest that the methane is either released by geological processes that are influenced by temperature or is produced by an unknown biological source associated with the Martian seasons. There have been repeated rumors and evidence that a certain amount of Martian water may have retreated into the ground. NASA considers ideas of underground cities and oceans to be exaggerated, but it's possible that deeper layers of Mars are moist and harbor simple life forms. A less exciting explanation for the methane emissions, which does not involve bacteria at all, would be the interaction of water with certain minerals in the Martian soil. Another theory suggests that the methane could be a remnant of past microbial life forms trapped in underground ice clumps that periodically melt and release the gas. Computer simulations have now shown several times that there may once have been oceans on Mars. The planet probably lost its already thin atmosphere early on in its development and thus also its ability to hold liquid water on the surface. If there was once water on Mars, it is likely that there were at least simple life forms. What is left of it today and whether Mars can be turned back into a thriving world through plans such as terraforming is unclear. When Elon Musk came up with such plans, he was thought to be a megalomaniac. But what hardly anyone knows is that NASA already had similar plans in the pipeline in the 1990s. However, these were not pursued further at the time because it was assumed that they could not be implemented or were simply too expensive for NASA. Where did the wow signal really come from? When it comes to the wheeling and dealing in the space business, it's refreshing that NASA is fortunately not the only company exploring space. 
SETI is a project that was founded by independent radio astronomers and today listens into space with the largest radio telescopes on Earth. The Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence project has its ear pricked up around the clock, trying to track down every strange sound in space. Sensors record the measurement data, which is not actually audible to our ears, and then countless data sheets are examined by computers and people all over the world for any anomalies. On August 15, 1977, an unusually strong radio signal was identified that was picked up by the Big Ear Radio Telescope at Ohio State University. The signal came from the direction of the constellation Sagittarius and lasted 72 seconds. Astronomer Jerry R. Emmon, who reviewed the data, was so impressed that he wrote, wow, next to the printout of the measurement, giving the signal its unusual name. Despite numerous attempts, the signal could never be repeated or explained, leading to speculation about its possible extraterrestrial origin. A more recent example is the BLC-1 signal, which was carried out by the Parkes Telescope in Australia as part of the Breakthrough Listen project. The signal came from the direction of the Proxima Centauri star, of all places, where an Earth-like exoplanet is suspected. The signal was so peculiar that SETI experts called it a breakthrough and very likely of intelligent origin. Conservative scientists and NASA, on the other hand, claimed that BLC-1 was caused by an interference source on Earth. As with the WOW signal, the true origin could never be found. But the discovery seemed so suspicious to one man that he donated billions and launched the Breakthrough Starship program. The super-rich Yuri Milner has long been an enthusiastic supporter of SETI and is now building tiny spaceships with the best engineers in the world. Accelerated to almost the speed of light, they are supposed to fly to the Proxima Centauri system to see what is really going on there. Can this be normal? Geometric shapes and flowers in space. Can you imagine that NASA is a long way from admitting that space was created by an intelligent force or is possibly intelligent itself? But if we take a closer look at the universe, we notice some circumstances that make us wonder. How does it come to precise geometric shapes, which are found almost everywhere in the universe, if the cosmos is supposed to be just a wild pile of mathematical formulas, chaos, and chance? Particularly fascinating in this context is the hexagon at the North Pole of Saturn which was first observed in detail by NASA's Cassini space probe. This hexagon is wider than two Earth diameters and is officially a flow formation in the planet's atmosphere. However, Cassini showed something else, namely signs of a blue sky in the center of the hexagon. This could mean that there are previously unknown spheres beneath Saturn's thick layer of gas clouds. But can there be life or possibly even a civilization on Saturn because of this? Probably not because the pressure conditions on the planet would at least not allow life as we know it. In the 1980s and 90s, however, some interesting witnesses claimed that NASA was aware of extraterrestrial activity around Saturn. These life forms are very different from us and mine a mineral in the rings of the gas giant, which is then transported away in a huge spaceship. Experts are supposedly able to recognize these activities in the rings, which is why NASA only publishes censored photos of Saturn and always shows the planet in an orientation in which the spaceship is not visible to us. Not only the atmospheric and possibly alien phenomena of the planets, but also the cosmic nebulae in the universe often show astonishing geometric shapes. Many of these nebulae, which are formed by the explosions of stars or serve as the cradle of new stars, reveal symmetrical patterns and structures on closer inspection that are reminiscent of artistic designs. This speaks less for extraterrestrials, but all the more for a kind of intelligence that creates all this. Researchers have even found shapes, such as flowers or other geometric patterns in the orbits that planets follow in relation to each other. Can this really all be coincidence? Alien intelligence is after all. Do you also think that it is very striking how consistently NASA dismisses all claims about extraterrestrials and unexplained phenomena? Critics repeatedly claim that NASA is so tough because it has known about aliens on Earth and in the surrounding area for a long time. Scientific projects have calculated that statistically there must be 32 civilizations in our galaxy alone that are similar to us. These could be joined by numerous other life forms that are completely different from us but can also be considered intelligent, and there may even be superintelligences that are far superior to us. 
The Russian astronomer Nikolai Kardashev already developed a scale in the middle of the last century, according to which there should be numerous civilizations that develop linearly to their energy generation capabilities. The advanced peoples could tap into the power of their stars, developing ever new technologies until they had finally evolved into super life forms that knew the blueprint of the universe and could co-create entire galaxies. Of course, NASA is far from admitting that such a thing is possible, but not all scientists are so narrow-minded. A star called KIC 8462852 was spotted 1,470 light-years from Earth. It shows such a strange dimming that it's unique and so far unexplainable, unless we consider a very special explanation. Aliens could have built a power plant around the star, which is also known as Tabby Star. That would explain the dimming. The Dyson Sphere is a concept built by physicist Freeman Dyson based on Kardashev's scale of intelligence. As a hypothetical megastructure, such a sphere could completely enclose a star in order to harness a maximum amount of its energy for civilization purposes. Some open-minded researchers have even suggested that voids, the gigantic empty spaces in the universe, are not really empty at all. Again, an intriguing idea based on Kardashev's scale came into circulation. What if extraterrestrials have darkened entire galaxies in these areas so that we simply can no longer see them? If we believe Kardashev's advanced ideas, ever more advanced civilizations would certainly be able to do this. And there is simply no other physically coherent explanation for the emptiness of the voids. Press the subscribe button right now. There are many more exciting videos to come.